Time on the Hill, which is focused on helping really intelligent, committed candidates that would like to work predominantly on the Hill, but I would say it's 70% of the number is on the Hill. And so first, please let me start by thanking Justin Brown. I've known Justin for a really long time. And uh, he asked if I would come today. I was really excited about it. We've helped a ton of veterans. And um, I have specific reasons as to why I think that veterans bring an extraordinary amount of value to positions on the Hill. How many of you are veterans? That's crazy. How many of you are currently still in the military? That's awesome. So we kind of have a combo of people that are thinking ahead. We have some folks that are ready to go. How many of you are interested in working on the Hill? Okay. How many of you are thinking the private sector? Okay. Very cool. That's really cool. So just by way of background, I came to the Hill at 28, and I felt very old about it. I was looking around at all these young kids, and I'm like, God, I'm only 28 years old. I feel crazy old. So it is run by a lot of youngins up there. Um, now 37 years old, and we've helped 2,000 people get jobs on Capitol Hill. So the more I watch the trajectory of staff as they go up to the Hill, the more I realize how young it is in terms of um, who's really up there writing policy. Having said that, uh, we've helped a ton of people with a ton of experience get jobs on the Hill. One thing that I would keep in mind if I were a veteran and I was heading to the Hill is that you don't have to be an MLA. You don't have to be a, a military policy advisor. And so I do have a ton of folks that say, Brent, if I go up there, am I gonna be pigeonholed into being the defense guy? And I will say, no, not necessarily, but guess where you're probably gonna start? Because if you're a veteran and you have this expertise and you know the vernacular and all the acronyms, which I don't understand, and all these different components of the military, guess where the typical chief of staff is going to think that you're gonna bring the most value? Because you have this expertise. If you were a nurse and you were heading into Congress, guess where you probably start? You might start off with healthcare in your portfolio. So if you're thinking about on the hill and off the hill, this is a little bit about what we're seeing in January of 2019. If you're a Republican chief of staff who just lost, you're having a real hard time. There are a dime a dozen. There are plenty of jobs out there, but you're gonna have to figure out how to market yourself. If you are a Republican that just came off the Hill, please don't ever say that you're a generalist. Because if I'm gonna hire you and I'm the managing partner of a firm and you're a generalist, what is it that you have the expertise to do that I'm gonna give you the amount of money that you'd like and deserve? Right? Now having said that, the more diving we do in the committees in terms of what they could use right now, there's a lot of staffing changes on the committees, new chairmen, new ranking members. There are tons of senior level positions out there. So if you're working really hard, and by that I mean you're really putting yourself out there, you have a strategy, you can get these jobs on the Hill if you're a Republican. If you're a Democrat and you miss out on this opportunity, you are a fool because I have not in the last seven years seen such a wonderful time for a junior level candidate all the way up to an attorney or senior advisor who are getting offers for the last three weeks like I have seen this month. So if that makes any sense. Um, if you're really interested in working on the Hill, the company's called Time on the Hill. Please feel free to check out our website. It's very easy to set up an appointment. We are very veteran focused. We've helped tons of veterans, and I'll, I'll, I'll just finish. I will not make anyone else late, so I'll wrap this up quickly. But I'll give you a quick little story that I love. Uh, there are very few colleges that do a good job of helping their kids get jobs in government, and they do a horrendous job of helping veterans get a job in the con in government, except for a few schools, and one of them is VMI. VMI is incredible. And there's a gentleman named Eric Hunter, and if you ever meet Eric Hunter, he is a blessing and he's incredible. And he, he sends to me a guy and he says, Brent, I'd really like you to help this guy. He's in the Navy. I said, okay. Is there anything else I should know about him? No, he's a great guy and he's in the Navy. So I said, okay. So I call him up. He's in town. He meets me within a few hours of my office at six o'clock. He sits down, he's freshly shaven, looks great, great suit but he's got kind of these little talon things coming out of his shirt. And I'm like, man, something's up with this guy. So I said, did you bring a resume? He says, yeah, I brought a resume. I looked at it and I'm like, 
SEAL team or something? And then it goes six years with the SEALs and then BMI and whatever, and the next thing you know, it says Special Warfare Team 2. And I'm like, this guy is not just in the Navy. This guy is like really super crown to the crown. He says to me, Brent, here's what I'm going to do. I'd, I'd like for your help in discussing the Hill, but I'm going to Wharton. And then after that, I'm going to see where it takes me. I said, going to Wharton, like MBA, like University of Pennsylvania Wharton. He said, absolutely. So he took his exam in Germany. He gets into Wharton. He crushes Wharton, and now he's doing he wanted, He's just an amazing, amazing guy. And I view him as kind of the perfect example of the way veterans seem to go about their search for whatever it is they want, but particularly the Hill. He, he didn't care that he was stationed in Germany, and he was going to take his MBA the test, which I never would be able to get in Wharton. He does it in Germany and crushes it. If, if you have a strategy, like you had throughout your entire military career, and you want to go to the private sector, or you want to go to the Hill, I assure you, you will be successful. Because you have a plan and you know how to execute it. I do know that it's incredibly frustrating at times. It took me 74 coffees and interviews to get on the Hill, because I had no idea what I was doing. My resume was abysmal, and I can share all that with you later. But um, if you're interested in the Hill, uh, we would love to be of service. There are not nearly enough veterans on the Hill's congressional staff. 20% of the congressional members are veterans, which is beautiful. Um, but I just think that you wouldn't want to have a conversation without a doctor in the room to discuss medicine. Why don't we have more veterans in the room to discuss defense and the military and pro? So I think that's my two cents. I'm really grateful to be here, and if I can be of service, just please let me know. Today's employment workshop is moderated by Tyrone Bratton, Legislative Director to Representative Elaine Luria, and features Hill employment experts Brent Sullivan, Dustin Brown, and James Langendifer, Chief of Staff to Representative Brian Mass.